All right, so now we're going to start inking into the scene. And what we want to do here is think about the perspective. But again, I can already tell, you know, I don't know what I was thinking when I illustrated this, but I'm actually glad it wasn't in perspective because it gives us a unique opportunity to explain it in a way where it's like we're handing it off from another artist. So I guess there's going to be times when even your own art might not have been what you expected. So although I thought I kept perspective in mind enough, these windows up top are actually really out of perspective. So based on the one point perspective that I have in place there, I'm on a new layer and I'll just call these, uh, you know, inked perspective or something like that, which I'm probably going to add a lot more of the detail to this one. But oh, and let's go ahead and spell that correctly. There we go. So now anything that we draw on this one will confine to the uh, perspective grid because it's on or perspective ruler. So what I want to do here is just, you know, kind of check the work. So if I go right here, you can see that that line is close. It's not completely on though. So if I go from here back, and actually we got to be very careful because as you get towards the middle, it'll accidentally snap to that middle uh, line there. So based on the perspective, uh, going to this vanishing point, these lines are correct. So we're going to grab a few of these. Now keep in mind too, you also want to use line weight to your advantage to convey this. And I'm going to draw right outside of the frame because I can erase this back easily enough. But I want to have a thicker line that converges down to a thinner line. I'm going to try that from the other direction. Because this helps to convey a sense of depth within the scene almost instantly. So just be aware of that that's a good use of a tapered line because of what it does for the perspective. And you can really do that throughout, but I think I'm going to keep it the most predominant on that centerpiece. Uh, that's just preference. So now, as I do this, uh, I want to, you know, keep checking these lines. But like I said, I already know that when I get to the point of the, uh, the bottom of the windows, I'm going to see a big variation uh, and a mistake, basically. So I guess this really depends on, you know, who you're working with, if you really have... Uh, leniency to change the work or if you just want to try to you know ink over top of it and that's really what I'm going to do here so if you notice if I check a lot of these lines a lot of the screens are off you know that bottom portion is pretty good so I'll, I'll grab what lines I can I don't even know if I like that line maybe something starting the line and I can see this line is actually pretty accurate I'll go with that one and you can really notice some that have been pulled perspectively. These right here are. So what I'm going to do is actually utilize the ones that are in correct perspective and hopefully kind of rein some of this in. Uh, but I'm actually going to let the windows be outside of correct perspective. So these uh, lights are fine. Get those in there. So I'll just start with the edges. Now, the beauty of layers is you really can just draw through a lot of this, get the shapes that you want, and then erase back. So I'll do a little bit of that. Not a big deal. So you see our vertical lines for the doorway are about where they need to be. So are the horizontal. So a lot of this is, uh, you know, we'll, it'll work out to use um, the perspective ruler. But then there's going to be things that just do not use it at all. And that's going to be like the screen on an angle. Uh, you know, lots of these screens because they're tilted, things like that. So we're just going to get some of this base information in place. And then, like I said, once we get to here, we're going to actually fake uh, the perspective more. Because if not, we're going to have to shift all this artwork down uh, and really change it quite a bit. Uh, and that might go against, you know, working with another artist and what they really want you to do. So, um, and I think that for the most part, it doesn't look visually off too much, maybe because it's such a busy scene. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is tighten up on the work. And again, I can clean up what's here uh, so I don't get too far ahead of myself. So I can take the translucent uh, brush, and just erase back some of these lines. And really a couple ways to do this. So if you don't like uh, erasing back these lines, maybe you get some weird artifacts to the edges and things like that. Uh, you know, if you zoom up, you can see I didn't catch every bit of that line. 
Uh, the other way is just to incorporate the layer, throw that bit of information in, and then merge it down with Command E. So I'll, I'll find myself doing that a lot as well. So there's no lines here, so get rid of these guys. Okay. And another way to do this, probably quicker, especially for straight edges, is just grab the polyline tool, select right through here, shoot over to here. You can probably tell I don't use this one as much as I should. I'm a little bit shaky with it, but uh, sometimes it's you know just quicker better to do now the other thing is this so software actually supports vectors and you can use the vectors to uh, clean up overlaps really quickly like this but I'll be honest I don't use that either so I just want to show you exactly how I go about my work and this would be it maybe a little bit more painstakingly but it's the method I prefer so just like that we got those cleaned up and obviously we can clean up the border uh, real easy at the end. So let me just show you what I'm gonna do over here to kind of correct this. So again, it may look like uh, it's gonna be a lot of extra work or it should be less work to really correct it because we're not going to shift all the artwork around. Um, but essentially what I wanna do is just give myself guides based upon what's here. So I'm gonna click through here, give myself that uh, perspective that I'm already seeing here even though it's not correct and then I'm going to rotate this a bit and I'm just going to ink through this I'm just basically drawing through it but what I want to do here is think about you know where these windows are going to end up am I going to use this top line here so even though I'm pretty close to what's here I need to think about how this might distort by the time I get over to here so I think I'm going to go with the first window being right here so I'm going to shorten the artwork just a little bit and draw out this first window so I'm trying to get this curve in place and then we're looking up into the scene so we're going to see the inside edge of the top of the window something like that and then use our translucent brush to uh, erase back some of this detail and clean up this little area and then clean up the divide. So that's kind of how I'm going to do each one of these windows. Uh, now, I'll be honest, it's real easy to do one window and copy and paste it, but uh, I'm not going to do that because uh, it's just not really necessary here. The artwork's in place. And again, I want to kind of approach this a little bit more traditionally because I don't want to get in the habit of changing the artwork. Again, you got to think about working with other people. You know, again, this is my own artwork, so I really have uh, the, the final say in this matter, but I still try to work in a way where I'm ready to work with somebody else if I need to. Now, the other thing to think about is as you work back in this direction, you know, keep in mind, this is a, a little bit of an incorrect perspective, but we still can use the line that we've established here to work back into this area. So we can still use kind of the rule of perspective to uh, aid us. But the other thing is you want to beef up these lines as you get further back. Now, a lot of this is going to be filled in. So let's see if that's all on one layer. Yeah, so I can go ahead and just fill that in now like that. And I'm going to come back with uh, like some negative lines and make, you know, the space and, and stuff like that. But what I want to do is get a little bit heavier line weight as I go back to again convey like this feeling of depth just like that fill that in so on and so forth raise this back And you see, I'm, you know, I could get in here and I could start detailing all this and adding some shading, but I'm, I'm not worrying about that yet. In fact, what I want to do is make sure 
that I can illustrate the main shapes all the way back here and get some kind of continuity going. Uh, so I think what happens is it's a little bit easier on the old brain box if you itemize the work and you do things in a consistent way. I think that's really important with inking because it's very easy to just bounce all over the place. Now, there is a different way to look at that. Probably a lot of ways to look at everything, right? So uh, one way is, are you really inspired to be working on whatever you're doing at that very moment? So in that case, I find this more with characters than I do with the backgrounds anyways. So if there's something that I'm inspired to do, like I'm feeling really great about the characters, then I may purposely ignore what I just said and, and work all across the board uh, on the characters. But I may just still keep it to at least just characters. So then I kind of play into my strengths at the moment. Um, that's Anyways, that's how I do it. I really don't know that there's a, a set way that you should go about that. But I do feel like if you're doing something right, you should really utilize that for speed and consistency in the work. So get all of that. You know, it's also like if you're fighting an uphill battle and you're not getting your, uh, your gadgetry, your techie stuff to look right in the scene, you know, what makes more sense to bounce around to another area, something you might be doing well, uh, and, and do well with that or fight an uphill battle and possibly do a lesser quality of work. Now, if you don't have any time left and there's a certain aspect of your work that has to be done, then that's just the way it is. But like I said, if you do have that leniency and you can jump over to something that you're a little bit more excited about and you seem to be um, effectively doing better at that moment, then utilize that to your advantage. So you see, I'm, I'm freehanding a lot of these lines in here. I could obviously be using the shift click method. Uh, so I could, I could even check my work. I could shift click this way and see how well I did or how not so well I did, but I, I think it's good enough. So I'm just going to continue on. I'm feathering the line a little bit, but I'm ultimately trying to get, I'm only doing that because it's a curve. I'm ultimately trying to get a, um, a smooth consistent line and then just like that notice too I'm, I'm using a thicker line even though this is going to get filled in but you are going to see this heavier line uh, on the the rocky side of this moon shape or whatever so you know as we start to illustrate this it will sh expose some of the uh, heavier lines that I'm trying to introduce to convey some depth Remember that this is a floating frame, so we need to fill this in before we drop in the bucket tool. So just like that, let's go ahead and fill this in. And we got to get rid of some of the uh, lines here. Double click here and straighten it out and see what we got. So I want to check it from a distance and I feel like those window shapes are pretty accurate. Uh, now they're not perfect. We know that they're not in perspective, uh, correct perspective. And we also know that I didn't check center to each one and divide it and then try to figure out the divides of the separating uh, metal pieces there. So I just went with a visual interpretation and obviously the use of the line work that was already there. So I just want you to see that the lines were nudged. Uh, now that's not generally going to happen for the most part. You're generally just going to go right over top of whatever you're given. And that's okay. Again, it's this kind of symbiosis with you and somebody else. In this case, it's my own work. But at the same time, you have to realize, you know, what um, is acceptable to change. Uh, ask lots of questions and, um, you know, see, see what they really want out of the end result. If you find something that's incorrect in a nice way, you know, hey, the perspective's a little off, what, what should we do here? Uh, some styles are really gonna throw that to the wind and just do what they want. And, and I think this one really could have just been inked exactly over top, uh, but I did wanna try to show you that, you know, there's ways to kind of think about correcting it as well. So let's go ahead and wrap up here, head over to the next lesson and continue to ink the work.